Hi, my friends. This is Lada from astrolada.com. And today I'm here with astrologer Ksenia. Hi. Hello. Hi, Lada. Thank you so much for joining me all the way from Australia. Oh, my absolute pleasure. And happy birthday for this week as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> and it's a topic we kind of, we always talk uh, in astrology videos about relationships, but we haven't talked about being single. And Ksenia said, I need to clarify this to people, how to find in the horoscope, uh, if you have a predisposition according to your destiny, to spend longer periods in this lifetime alone, uh, and how to embrace that and not to fight it, you know. So you have the word. Oh, thank you, Lada. Thank you. Well, um, you know, it's been a kind of a monkey on my back for a lot of my life. I've spent lots of time alone um, and on my own. I'm a single mom at the moment. I've been on my own for eight years, um, which, uh, you know, if you'd have told me eight years ago, oh, you're going to spend a lot, you know, this big chunk of time on, uh, as a single person, I would have, like, been really angry at you. But now, um, eight years later, I see it as a real blessing in my life it's been such a gift uh, to have been able to spend this time getting to know myself um, my marriage kind of liberated me and uh, ironically enough Lada uh, today is the anniversary of my wedding 19 years ago <laughs> so it's kind of very synchronistic that we're talking about this and I was mentioning it to, it to one of my friends last night and she said, well, you know what, the, the nodes have done full circle. They've returned since since your marriage. They're back to where they were right. um, when you married, which is the end of the karma. The karma in the situation is finished and done. And yes. I'm like, Karma yes. runs in, um, in uh, nine or 18 years approximately. This is either half circle of the karmic nodes or a full circle. Yes. Yeah, so... so Wow, so maybe you'll meet today someone when you oh, go to work. Be nice. <laughs> and from next week you'll be talking about how good it is not to be single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, well, if it does or it doesn't, I'm happy either way because, you know, it, like I said, it has been a real gift. I've got to know myself and I, being married helped me to break away from a lot of the conditioning I'd had growing up. And then becoming single was just even more about my own independence and my own in liberation. So it's been very, very empowering. It's been actually really great. Difficult at times, but then so is being in relationships. So <laughs> there's there's good and bad in both. Yes, yeah. uh, like we were talking before we started recording. I've been, I told you I was like a monkey from a relationship to relationship since I was 25. Uh, and basically, I've never been without a partner since then, since 23, sorry. And I, I was telling you that actually I'd much rather some relationships that I didn't stay in them and that I would just go into a relationship just so I have someone in my life. I'm one of those people that feels needy to have someone. I was not necessarily in love. I was not necessarily uh, convinced this was the person. And this created pain knowing that, feeling guilty all the time, plus you get attached to the person, then it breaks your heart when you break theirs and when you separate. And I went to relationships for the wrong reasons. I have the North Node, Rahu, in the seventh house, which is known for making a lot of mistakes in relationships because they, I haven't done relationships in past lifetimes. So I'm kind of quite, let's say, people with North Node in the seventh are novices in doing relationships. So they go to relationships, they make mistakes. They choose their relationships for the wrong reasons, but they jump a lot. <laughs> they, they, they learn a lot of relationships. And I learned that uh, you should be in relationships for the very right, for right reasons only. Absolutely. Uh, and I could have, I might as well just have been single for all those years <laughs> before. Yeah. Enjoying yourself and avoiding all that pain and, and the suffering that can go with, you know, torn relationships. And, and being dishonest at the same time because yeah. you start hating yourself because you're almost feeling like you're cheating a person uh emotionally through that yes. uh, and you get hard on yourself you start hating yourself uh but other people are single you know other people i in have other people have been on the other side someone like me who doesn't know what they still want and just keeps them hanging there and uh, I, I don't excuse myself a lot, and I, I don't want to ever cause this to anyone. So, But I want to show you also the other perspective that someone like me who is confused, we didn't necessarily want to hurt another person. We just were confused about what we want and, 
you know, who we are. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, let's talk about being single now. <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, I, I was talking with my girlfriends at work about it yesterday and we were saying, you know, the soulmate that you think you're looking for when you're 20 is not the soulmate that you're going to be looking for when you're 40 because we, they change, we change, and it's better to spend a bit of time getting to know yourself and understanding yourself and developing your best self so that you do know what you want. I mean, I was very naive when I was 23 and married my first boyfriend and I thought, you know, this is it. But I was so, I had not developed myself and my independence to have a real proper understanding of what it was I needed and what was important to me in life. So, yeah, it's um, I get a lot of clients actually coming to me. When am I going to meet somebody? And, you know, I, I'm tired of being alone. I've been alone for six months or something. And, and you know, it's uh, <laughs> It's it's certainly an issue for many people because, I mean, we are as human beings built with this, in, we have this desire for connection, but that need not necessarily take the form of an intimate relationship all the time. Sometimes it's community and sometimes it's girlfriends and, and boyfriends, you know, like, like my girlfriends for me and boyfriends for a boy. <laughs> and, um, you know, it takes many, you know, um, displays of community to feel to have connection we can't expect one single person to fill all the the needs for connection that we have as a as a human being absolutely and i was speaking with my teacher before that and she was saying that um she was single for 10 years and she said if it was not for those 10 years i was not going to become such a great astrologer yeah and i was unhappy for 10 years in relationships because I would just stay there just so I have a relationship without being honest to myself. So I was basically without a relationship, let's say. Because yeah. you spend a lot of time isolated, alone, feeling sorry for yourself, the same as sometimes when people are single and are not happy being single. Yeah. And this was the time when I jumped in to explore astrology as well and to understand about relationships. So like we were talking with you, being single can be one of the greatest gifts to develop the talent because when you're in a happy relationship, uh, you feel so you feel fulfilled. I feel this for the first time in my life, and you feel so fulfilled that you might lose your drive. Mm. You might be distracted all the time. Because, and that's what even esoteric uh, my a teacher who died a hundred years ago, a spiritual teacher, he said. People do have actually soulmates, like the proper twin flames, but you meet them very rarely. Because if you meet them every life. You're not going to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> you're just going to be in that bliss and you're just not going to be driven. And he said that you meet only in very unique, like, reward lives or when you have some very important work to do together. Uh, and I, I think that this is so true, you know, because mm -hmm. the moments when I, was, um, when I was not in relationship or when I was felt like I was single is when I did the most important work, the most soul-searching and the most growth and through that, I'm able to help people now astrologically. Yeah, yeah. Years ago, I attended, and this is part of my um, previous life. I've sort of done big 180 degrees since then, but I did attend Bible college for a year. And at college, there was this big debate between the students about, um, you know, is uh, do you wait for a soulmate, you know, that one person, twin flame kind of thing to come into your life or can you marry anybody? And um, it was this big debate between us and there were the realists who were like, no, you can marry anyone and make it work. And then there were the romantics like myself who were like, no, you wait for a soulmate to come into your life. But I'm, I don't know, I, my perspective is that, um, well, well, I'll start with the, uh, the you can marry anyone kind of argument you know quantum physics I love quantum physics and you know they've proven that you can take um, a, a subatomic particle like a quark or a lepton and divide it in two and have half in London and half of it in or, or one bit of it in London one bit of it in New York and they're both spinning in the same direction and if you change the direction of the one in London automatically the one in New York will change direction oh. and there is no physical connection between the two yet they're connected and this theory has you know to me the philosophical connection with this theory or, or it's an experiment they've proven it um, and the philosophy with that is that at the most basic building blocks of who we are we're all connected you know the 
we are all one, so you can divide into two, but you can divide into five, ten, bazillion, whatever. And we, I hope I'm making sense here. And uh, yeah. we're all connected, and and that's why we crave connection. We we crave to to be uh, one, so to speak. We're all made of the same substance and 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 star stuff. So I hope that makes kind of sense, and I'm not just <laughs> confusing everybody, but. Um, and so to me that's like yeah well that that fits with the you can marry anybody kind of theory but just the same we're all functioning at different levels and I'm not going to marry a narcissist or, or have a committed relationship with a narcissist or a sociopath or you know some kind of criminal that's not my desire we may be all one and all made from the same substance and you know all having our physical journey in life but that doesn't mean that we're all functioning at the same level. Um, some people have their head up their ass and some people have woken up, you know. So um, <laughs> to me, the whole you can marry anyone theory is nice in theory, but I don't think it actually plays out well in reality. And the the other one um, of the soulmate kind of thing, you know, Plato's theory where, you know, the mythology oh, where, so, yeah. Yeah, where Zeus split the... The androgynous soul in two and then we spend the rest of our lives looking for that other half that we've been split from um you know that that can leave us with feeling you know a lot of of pain in this lifetime as we wait for the right one to come along or it feels a bit cruel not liberating or enlightened to be sort of always searching and never feeling like we find that person so no, I mean, yeah. just one <laughs> yeah I, i'm not i'm not on the page with the just the yeah, one soulmate the, thing two, two extremes those two theories that you can marry anyone or that there's just one person for you know <laughs> that's right yeah no no there's i think there's many fated relationships and a lot of karmic relationships where we have to like my my marriage i believe was one of these where we had some stuff to finish from a past lifetime and and now my karma with that is done so yeah 19 um, years <laughs> 19 years exactly exactly no <laughs> good it's done <laughs> but yes um I'm, i keep looking at my notes because i don't want to miss anything so sorry if i keep looking down but um no no it's uh <laughs> i'm no, curious to know what is the what have you noticed as an astrologer as yeah. indications in the horoscope so people who are listening can check you know if you've been single a lot during your life but maybe you can check now with astrology yes see. exactly well um <clears throat> pardon me obviously saturn is one big player i mean he's karmic and he's restriction and he delays things until later in life so um if you've got uh saturn in the fifth house he's going to delay um romance and love affairs and that sort of thing and restrict that especially if he's in debilitation in you know uh, cancer or leo or something like that but also the seventh house um the same kind of thing delays in committed partnerships um it doesn't mean necessarily it's going to never happen for you but it's probably going to happen a lot later and with older partners um and older relationships so you know, um, you've said many times in your lectures, usually after the age of 35, when Saturn matures, 36, then things can come. But and I'm finding that often that that can be also, um, you know, into your 40s as well. Before yes, you or even sometimes into your second Saturn return. Wow, that's it's really interesting. Saturn burns after the second Saturn return sometimes. And sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, that's fascinating because I've had a lot of clients come to me saying, you know, when am I going to meet someone? And it's been such a long time and they're approaching their, their second Saturn return and wondering why, you know, it didn't happen at their first Saturn return. So, and I see people with Saturn in the seventh or in the fifth that are in relationships, but they feel disconnected. They, they feel lonely in the relationship, especially when they younger or some important long-term life relationship just felt like, you are in it, but you're you're lonely. Yeah. So this as well as you're not. Yeah. I mean, and and what we all long for is that true connection. So you know, the the restriction of Saturn doing his thing in the fifth and the seventh is is there, and also with Venus as well. Yeah. You know, Saturn aspect Venus. 
Yeah, I've got um, Saturn conjunct Venus, which I think has been my big challenge. <laughs> um, certainly in terms of self-confidence and that sort of thing, that's been something I've needed to work through and, and the, the best working through I've done with that is as a single person. So um, I think that it can ultimately be a blessing, but it certainly takes some time to, to deal with that one. I want to bring up again, I'm sorry if I bring up your personal past life. Go for it. You told me a fantastic story, even in the previous interview, we talked about that, that right. Saturn conjunct Venus is not necessarily you being punished in this lifetime because you're a bad partner in a past lifetime or that's why you're being delayed. Actually, you saw your past lifetimes and it showed that you were abused uh, physically as a slave girl and uh, horribly unloved and uh, raped and whatnot. And you were born with the fear of bonding almost and the wounding that basically you had to heal in this lifetime. So being alone allowed you to not to rely on someone to love you, but to learn to love yourself, heal that, and now you're ready to love again. Precisely. That's exactly right. Um, Saturn is the, the planet of, you know, he, he instills fear wherever he is. And uh, for me, he's in the fifth house. So not oh, only with Venus. Yes. <laughs> wow. yeah, not only with Venus, he's in the fifth house. <laughs> long time so. being single. Okay. <laughs> well, you married young. You were, for a long time, you were married. But obviously, yeah. there was a lot of unresolved pain from past lifetimes that you had to uh, learn to give yourself this love rather than... That's right. Partner. Well, I was 23 when I got married and we dated for six months before we got engaged. Um, so it was very quick, really, by, by you know, modern standards. And um, he was my first boyfriend. Prior to that, I'd never had a boyfriend and there's lots of unrequited love. And with Saturn with Venus often brings around... Um, uh, you know, you are in love with somebody then, but they don't reciprocate. So lots of unrequited love. And then the reverse is true as well. You get a lot of attention from people who you're really not interested in. And it's mm -hmm. it's almost as painful as unrequited love to have to sort of reject people and say, look, I'm sorry, I'm just not interested. That's for a kind-hearted person, It's it, that is painful to do that as well. So both ways, plus I was very lame about the whole starting relationships, romance kind of thing. I'm just, yeah, it's not my thing. <laughs> you feel out of your comfort zone. Like That's someone right. Jupiter in the fifth house will come, flirt with you. Hey, beautiful, how are you doing? Here's my phone number and you're in bed with them that night. So <laughs> the fifth will be like... Uh... <laughs> the opposite, absolutely opposite of that. <laughs> You're height, you're cowering in the corner almost. Oh, will they notice me? Oh, no, eye contact. Oh, you know, it's just, it's just stupid. I'm sure I said I did something stupid. Lots of that. Lots of going to bed at night going, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Or, yeah, precisely. But whatever Saturn is, we master it. That's why Saturn gives mastery of something later in age. Because to master something, you don't become a master after. You know, you become a master later. <laughs> exactly. I love that concept. That's, yeah, that's perfect. Good. Thank you. <laughs> that makes me feel good. Yeah, I, I know many relationship um, counselors uh, who've come to me for a reading and I've looked at their horoscope and they've, uh, two of them were extremely successful. One was even very famous, Saturn, Venus aspect. They've gone through all the breakups, all the being single, insecurities in relationships. So Saturn, something to do in the fifth or seventh. And now in his 40s, one was man, the other one was a woman. They are both uh, very successful uh, relationship counselors, masters of relationships. Yeah. Well, have both very happy relationships after the traumatic first experience, after a lot of introspection and repeat of the same mistakes or being single if, if you're if you're with saturn like we explained saturn in the seven in the fifth and you jump from relationship to relationship sometimes this happens as well mm -hmm. uh, you tend to repeat the same mistakes saturn requires isolation spending some time alone that's why it's better that you actually stay single for a little bit more and you go within and you do this work and, and you transform it, the ignorance of Saturn, the pain of Saturn, and, and then you emerge as a master in your tract. And in Vedic astrology, because uh, you've studied also Vedic astrology, yeah, uh, you know that the aspect of Saturn to Venus is said to be helpful. It will bring the pain. Their friends, yes. 
but later in life it will bring you a very stable long lasting happy uh, relationship because you know how to when there are difficulties in the relationship to carry on through it and to persevere and to uh, appreciate because of the long wait that you've had you appreciate when the right partner comes and you're willing to do the hard work when you're already in a relationship. So this is a s indication, Saturn, Venus, or Saturn in fifth and seventh, that later in life you might have way better relationship than a lot of people around you. Yeah, so there's always hope with that. And I, yeah, I, I really oh. appreciate that. <laughs> also, Saturn with the, the Lord of the seventh house or the Lord of the fifth house, which I also have. Oh, so, my God. <laughs> so being single was definitely part of my journey, you know, to, to experience that. But I don't regret it for a minute. And like you said with the story about my past life regression, there has been fear there. But um, the, with that, with time comes the healing from that fear and, and that becoming and spending time single helps you become stronger in yourself, understand yourself, know yourself and become your better self. That helps you overcome the fear in the long term so it's it's fine <laughs> but yeah so saturn with the lord of the seventh house um which is the one i've got or with the lord of your fifth house um uh the condition of the fifth and seventh house house lords i i would say is also perhaps an indicator if you've got a smashed seventh house lord well perhaps it's going to take a bit more time for you to find the right partner, you know, to find someone who you can commit to and feel confident committing to. And um, you alluded to um, knowing some Vedic astrology. Uh, I um, uh, also would look in a chart at someone's Dara Karaka, which is the planet with the lowest degree and how healthy that particular Karaka is. It represents your spouse. Um, and so that that's another aspect of- Don't um, tell me for you, it's Saturn. <laughs> Thank you, God, it's not. <laughs> no, it's the, sun in, it's the sun in Leo. So I'm kind of hanging on that one thinking, yeah, look, I could be destined for someone really <laughs> very Leonian and shining like the sun. So we'll see. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep you posted on that one. <laughs> that's, 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 hmm. and it's a planet in a good um, state. The dignity. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So, so I would look at that, you know, uh, in a chart as well. Um, Saturn, mine is with conjunct Saturn, so the happy partner yeah. would be late. As I said, I met him at thirty six. So <laughs> yeah, but it can be like Saturn preserves, so it can be that long enduring partnership, yeah. so especially late in life. You know. <laughs> yeah, but I'll add also the South Node. South Node in the seventh can do that. Can leave someone single for longer periods i've seen yeah usually they might sometimes even marry younger but it's more karmic and they end it or they have to finish something but the south note in the seventh house means that the north note is in the first house which means that in this lifetime you have to build your personality independently because you come from a number of past lifetimes that were you were in codependent relationship you relied to a partner and it worked for you but you've lost yourself somewhere there you probably never were able to shine yeah. uh, independently and with Raku in the first house in this lifetime you need to focus on um, achieving your goals and on finding who you truly are and becoming achieving independence and initiative and in order for you to do that, the universe usually withholds a partner for you for certain periods of times. So you can stop being codependent on a partner. And then when you achieve this independence on your own and you discover who you truly are and you do your own thing, then you're allowed to have a partner again to fulfill. Yeah. That. So the north, the south node in the seventh house or with the ruler of the seventh house would also give such themes in a bit yeah. different way, but yeah my understanding of the the way the nodes work is that the north node is what we're rising up into in this lifetime what we're becoming what we crave more of and the south node is uh what we we've got the big ticks for in our past lives we know what we're doing there and it's actually comfortable for us to be there so for people with it in the seventh house maybe it's more comfortable to be in relationship but their destiny is to not stay necessarily in that kind of realm and, and to, to move out of it and become more autonomous, more to yeah. un, like you described, to know themselves better and to rise up into that. So And once they do that, 
again, relationships will be enabled for them, let's say. Yes. What they're clinging on and trying to uh, rely on a partner and trying to... Stay in their comfort zone. Yeah. If something takes them out of it, yeah. Like the universe yeah. and the faith or the higher self that wants them to become autonomous takes them away, takes those relationships away from them. If they can coexist in a relationship where... They, they, you know, they do their own thing and they allow the partner to do their own thing. They can do well, though. Yeah, them. yeah. So also Neptune is is a planet where, you know, you can have a lot of illusions wow. um, in the fifth house. I'm, um, what have I got written down here? Uh, in the fifth house, unrequited love when it's got bad aspects in the fifth house. So Yeah, um, I dream of the teacher or the married guy or... <laughs> Exactly. And Neptune, Pisces, you know, Pisces, strong people. I've got Pisces rising, so this is probably me as well. But we always seem to want what we can't have. You know, that that's a very Neptunian, uh, Piscean thing. So yes. um, that, that doesn't indicate that you're going to be single, perhaps, but it can indicate that it, your idealism might make it a little bit more difficult in this third world reality that we're in. So that was just another aspect I wanted to to know do you have any any others i i've noticed also a venus conjunct sun combust venus as long mm. as it's visible the person will not be able to and that's especially ancient astrology would astrologer would look at you babylonian astrology would look and if you have an invisible planet they'll say until this planet becomes visible by progression you cannot because invisible planet is so close to the sun that it's burned and only spiritual qualities manifest in your life. It's internal qualities like artistic skills for Venus, sense of beauty when it's close to the sun. But uh, until it becomes visible by progression, relationship might not manifest. Ability mm -hmm. to, you know, to give yourself self-love, to appreciate to self self-worth might not manifest. And I noticed that I only was able to start having relationship once my Venus, which is combust by the sun, became visible by progression. And um, that's something, that's one of the first things I would look uh, yeah. for people who say, say they, they would say like for 10 years I haven't had a relationship. And I would look maybe by progression, they, they were born with the visible Venus, but it became invisible by progression because Venus is often quite close to the sun. Yeah. For, for some people, certain periods in their life, sometimes for a few years, Venus can be invisible. And while it's invisible, it's called Heliaca rising of Venus. Then it's almost like relationships cannot manifest. And then it's time to work on the inner side of Venus conjunct sun is like to, to work on self-worth and on maybe on art of some sort. <laughs> yeah. So we would look at our progress chart to see, you know, where the Venus and the sun are and how many degrees apart would we be, be looking Usually for that? Usually Venus term. can become visible after seven degrees, but sometimes after 10 depends on the year yep. so it's I, I there is a special but if you see it's very close to the sun you know it's combust and you understand why and you see when it goes a bit further away from progress yeah, yeah. and that will if you're born with combust venus sun it will eventually happen at some point in your life in progressions that that will occur yes. Oh, yeah. So there's always hope. <laughs> there's always yes. hope. <laughs> but if you have Raku in the seven house like me, your Venus becomes visible and you start going in one inappropriate relationship after that. <laughs> <laughs> there's something always waiting there. No, of course. Of course. You know. They see everything sorts itself out. <laughs> it does. It does. And that's the one thing I really wanted to try and t um, present with, with this discussion is that just because you've got these indicators that can be really make relationships really difficult, it's not the end of the world. There is always, you know, there's always hope. Um, I know that we are actually uh, rising up into our D9 charts in life as well. So if you've got a really debilitated relationship um, quality to your birth chart, there's always the hope as well that, you know, as you get older, you're going to be rising up into something very different with your D9 chart. I mean, you'd have to have a look at that to be able to, to get a grip on what's in store for you relationally there as well. But um, but that's one aspect of hope that I, I would look for for someone wanting a relationship singleness reading. Um, but also um, I've been reading this great book lately by Robert Blaschke. It's about progressions. 
Um, and I loved the talk you gave not long ago about progressions, Lada, because it kind of really verified everything that he uh, was talking about in this book. But I came across, I'll read it, I'll quote it, this particular statement, and it really caught my attention. He says, I've repeatedly seen that the date of the progressed descendant changing signs or forming a conjunction or opposition with a natal planet coinciding with an important personal relationship entering the life. So I was like, oh, quick, have a look at my chart, see what is going on there. And um, sure enough, when my progressed descendant changed from Pisces into Aries, which is the only time it's ever changed signs in my life, <laughs> um, I, that was when I committed, uh, I married, you know, the, 19 years ago was, was at that point. And so I checked all my friends' charts and uh, a number of um, my clients who I've spoken to since then. And exactly as he describes it, that's what happens. You know, when it changes signs, some kind of significant relationship will enter your life. It could be a baby is born. Um, it could be a marriage. Um, and more, more often than not, there's some kind of commitment involved. So it's that's not, yeah. yeah, it's not not when, hey, I just meet this guy in the supermarket and we fall in love. It's It's when there's a ring put on my finger or there's we sign a contract together or buy a house together or some kind of commitment seems to be the case more so than just meeting and the often the person that you meet will have something in the sign opposite or the sign. yes for example my progress ascendant changed from pisces into areas like you a year and a half ago and uh two years ago and i met my husband and he's libra ascendant so yes. the seventh house so it's changed from, I've always had, you know, uh, from Pisces, my previous husband was Virgo rising. So the moment Pisces ascendant changed into Aries, the seventh house mo moved from Virgo into Libra, and I moved from, from Virgo husband ascendant to Libra husband ascendant. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. It's crazy how correct it is. And actually you can find your exact time of birth if you're, not certain say four or five minutes and but the year that your progress and then change and if you changed around that time a relationship you can basically exactly find the minute you were born yes do the rectification yeah yeah but it's also interesting Very correct to mm. notice and <laughs> i'm glad you check charts of uh, as well of clients and friends to confirm that it's yeah it's, i mean Always someone to sort of uh, verify my own beliefs with a bit of <laughs> practical reality. Um, but it was, I found it also interesting to look at my chart and the, the configuration of my planets um, means that I've never had my progressed ascendant conjunct a planet or oppose a planet. Um, and that is, so there's going to be no, uh, there'll be an opposition to the moon in about five years' time. And it's probably another. Uh, maybe 10 years before it changes signs again. So it gives you an idea of, oh, well, you know, th there could be another period of five years um, before there's any triggering in the chart of, um, of connection in, in that sense with a significant life partner. Um, and for some people, you know, if you told them that, they'd be quite upset. Oh, you mean yeah. I've got to wait another five years? No. They'll fire you as their astrologer. <laughs> That's right, because you tell them what you don't, they, they don't want to hear. But um, I don't see that, uh, my opinion is that it's not something to be afraid of. I'm, I'm at a point myself now where it's like, oh, another five years, okay, there's obviously more work to be done uh, on myself and, and you know, I, I enjoy being, being on my own to, to an extent, you know. Uh, everybody desires that one-on-one -on -one connection. But um, I guess before you become master of relationships, you have to become master of being single. And precisely master of relationships and that's what i wanted to sort of get at um i i uh i've done a lot of reading um uh of daniel giamario's work who um, established the shamanic astrology mystery school um and teaches shamanic astrology it's a it's a really fascinating uh astrological component um and he talks about um that i'll just read this sorry it's easier for me to do that um, he suggests that each of us need to work on becoming our best selves and we do that by if we're a woman we focus on what our mars is uh, or where our mars is in the chart 
or if we're a man we focus on where our venus is in in the chart um and because we don't need another person to complete us we are complete within ourselves we are enough on our own and i find that a beautiful concept and the more i thought about this idea the more i realized in my own life it's so true my mars is in leo and this is very sign based not house based theory my mars is in in leo and i have always been attracted to men and my husband was one of these kind of guys who was the real showman and the here i am love me kind of leonian person mm -hmm. um my ex-husband's very well-known rockabilly performer in america and uh, england and australia oh, and wow. yeah so he's he is like here i am <laughs> and um I, i'm very attracted by that but it was more than just an attraction it was a projection I think of my Mars onto him uh -huh. and I would kind of shrink into the background and be the I'll support you kind of wife you complete me you complete me <laughs> precisely and the universe is saying no Ksenia no that's not how it's done you have to become the Mars you have to become that Leonian queen you know put your own creativity out there in the world um, develop your self confidence, like all those Leonian qualities. Wear a lipstick. Put on. <laughs> yeah, wear my Back to the Future t shirt. And yeah. <laughs> my, do my daughter dared me to wear this today because we're talking about relationships. <laughs> but yeah, so that was for me what I've needed to work on. And maybe I need to work on that still a little more over the next five years or Would so. Just from life camera, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, That's yeah. Be centered. Thank you, Lada. This is a great vehicle for me to <laughs> to establish my mass. <laughs> but it's one. This is something actually. You're. Uh, that's fantastic observation, guys. Put this down. Write it down. If you you know everyone says you need to be complete yourself before you can attract the right partner because we always approach relationship from a place of I need you to complete me. Uh, you have those qualities that I always admire uh, because we have we we have those qualities within us indicated in our chart, but we are not showing them. And it's indicated for women in the masculine planet in Mars, while for men, they have to first exhibit and learn to live and to to uh, embody their Venus. Exactly. So men have to do their Venus planet, the women their Mars planet. This is such a great observation. Thank yeah. you so much. I mean that's so you would have you have your Mars in Aries, yes? Yes, but my Venus too, so oh <laughs> you do both. Yeah, for me. Well that's, <laughs> that's that, actually a really good point. Yeah. The people that have Venus Mars conjunction are often their their own um they're quite in, in in love when it comes they're not so needy. <laughs> All right. They can be incorporate both more much more yeah. easily. Yeah. Oh you're lucky you. <laughs> It's great but for someone who had say mars or venus on its own there mars for a, a woman and venus for a man i would say it's about becoming a fighter for um for a cause or becoming an independent warrior type of person being self-sufficient and self-reliant rather than looking for somebody uh you know who can be their warrior for them or who can fight for them you know you've got to be that's able what to... i always looked for i always looked for a boyfriend or a partner who is the leader who can tell me what to do and when i found such i would get so upset because they'll tell me what to do <laughs> <laughs> and i would go and try to become independent and the moment actually i became independent and approach relationships through not looking for someone to lead me and fight my battles. I still ask my husband when I can't confront someone, I'm like, you go tell them. Yeah. <laughs> the more you embody, yes, the more I embodied my Aries, Venus, uh, sorry, Mars, the, the better relationships became. That's so, yeah. tell you us about science, tell us. Yeah, about yeah, us. let's do that, cool. Um, so Taurus, I see, um, Taurus for a woman, uh, Taurus Mars for a woman and Venus for a man. Uh, and I'm going to read through these because there's a lot of them. Um, it's about, hang on, I've lost you. Are you there? There you are. It's about embracing beauty and pleasure and sensuality and the goddess or God within rather than looking for beauty, sensuality, pleasure outside of yourself. So finding that within yourself, does that make 
Oh, beautifully said. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, good. Um, you know, it, basically all the signs are about finding these qualities in yourself rather than looking for them um, outside of yourself. Gemini, it would be um, embracing the, the comedian, the intellectual, the, the communicator that you are, that you have the capacity to be rather than looking to, you know, be with the class clown or the funny man and, uh, you know, that, that kind of um, even the teacher, you know, to be with, oh, I want to be with someone who, who is a teacher or whatever, Gemini is teachers mm -hmm. and um, someone who can uh, give me some instruction about things. Well, no, no, it's about you being that. Um, and it's also interesting. Um, Gemini and, and Sagittarius in a little way as well are about being uh, being free and not needing so much a committed mm. partnership. That So the, the, the ability to embrace your own freedom is actually a big part for those two because they're the... Yeah. The, yeah, the most sort of uh, freedom-seeking of all the signs is the, the Gemini-Sagittarius access, um, access there. Sorry, I'll just have a sip of water if that's okay. Yeah, so a woman with the Gemini Mars, instead of uh, uh, attracting all those guys that keep um, uh, double dating them, yes. <laughs> social butterflies and irresponsible, they should become socially very active and uh, uh, communicative. And uh, Gemini is about skills as well, developing different skills and interests and being busy with those things. So they can, when they own it, they'll attract the right partner. Exactly. Perfect. Thank you, Lada. That's yeah. Sometimes I'm I know in my head how I want to explain these things, and you just always have such a brilliant way with words to to make it clear. <laughs> well, um, we're both Saturn Mercury women, so <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We've got I to have it just right. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Cancer uh, would indicate that. You need to take responsibility for your own nurturing and your own self-love rather than always, you know, seeking to nurture your partner or mother your partner. You know, you need to mother and care for yourself um, in, in that way. Uh, Virgo. Now, Virgo was interesting, Leo. actually. Ah, Leo. We talked about Leo. Be the yes. Performer. If you're a man with Venus in Leo, uh, instead of going for famous women or... Glamorous just... women, yeah. <laughs> Just be, you know, get in touch with your own inner, how do I say, lion, yeah, confident, yeah. former, and sense of fun and childlike joyfulness. Precisely, yeah. Actually, and that's that's a really good point. My my ex husband, who I'm still really good friends with, thankfully, um, he he is he was so funny and playful all the time. And that was the one of the things that attracted me to him in the first place. So I need to be that more playful. Yeah, I love that. I should say, tell that to my husband because he has Venus in Leo. So oh, attract me yeah. because I'm silly all the time and play. <laughs> but I'll tell him that. Yeah, he needs. You tell him he needs to be more playful. Leo game. <laughs> 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 to to be more complete. <laughs> Perfect. You're on a winner there. Yeah. <laughs> so Virgo would be um, about. Finding the value in serving yourself, you know, Virgo is very much about service and honoring your own perfection because, you know, Virgo can be very, Virgo is about perfection and it can be very critical and self-critical um, because it seeks perfection, but it's about recognising and honouring your own perfection, valuing yourself and your abilities instead of looking, say, for someone else to serve with. Or It's also about where you can... <clears throat> finding where you can make things better because Virgo likes to make things better. And if you can find, you know, where you can make things better yourself rather than trying to find someone else who will make things better, then you're going to be in a better place. Is that, does that kind of jail? Yeah, that makes sense? Totally, yeah. Yeah, so seek, seek um, to honour yourself um, and honour your own perfection um, and, and uh Look for where you can make things better rather than trying to find someone else who will make things better for you. Or take care um, of details for you or something. <laughs> yeah. Like. Yeah, or rather than being critical, you know. So uh, Libra. Now, Libra, which is all about relationships, I, I really love Libra, um, but it's about being your own best partner, you know, understanding the beauty of a relationship with yourself. And Librans might actually find that a little bit hard to 
to do to come to terms with because they are so relationship driven. Um, now your partner's he's a he's Libra uh, right. Sun rising right. rising. <clears throat> so um, so this doesn't really apply because he he doesn't have Venus there, but. Um, if you've got Mars for a woman or Venus for a man, it's about loving, honouring, giving, serving and um, and finding pleasure in yourself rather than needing those sorts of relationship qualities from another person. So being able to be independent, I guess, is the, the main theme for a Libran. It's uh, funny how for Libra everything is always flipped, whether for Libra rising or for it's always about <laughs> the, the opposite meaning. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. So for Venus in Libra, man, he should learn to instead of he should learn to be kind of, as you said, independent, basically. Mm, yeah. Uh, basically, it's it's looking. For, for Libra, it's looking at Aries, becoming more Aries, mm -hmm. you know, more independent and more um, self actualizing mm -hmm. rather than needy for a relationship all the time. So, um, yeah, you, you, that's mm -hmm. that's the Libra kind of approach. Scorpio, um, it's about taking command of your own personal power rather than giving it away to somebody else, you know. Yeah. Um, owning your own emotions and the intensity of your, emo your emotions and honouring the intensity of your emotions um, instead of, you know, looking for someone who's passionate or looking for someone who's powerful. Be the powerful person. Be the passionate person yourself. Um, and then a relationship will work better when you're being more scorpionic yourself. Um, Sagittarius, uh, learning to honour your own search for truth. Um, and freedom and, and you know, you search for philosophy um, and instead of, you know, waiting for that partner to come so you can travel the world together. Do it yourself before the oh, partner comes Great down. advice. Yeah. Um, or go study, you know, rather than, you know, always needing to be with someone who provides that kind of intellectual stimulation in your life. Go and be the intellectual. Go and mm -hmm. study more and probably meet your partner there <laughs> at your university or something. But, um, yeah, becoming more of the Sagittarian yourself when you've got Mars or Venus um, in there. Uh, Capricorn, um, Mars, or Mars for a woman, Venus for a man, is about becoming the elder, the responsible um, sort of matriarch or patriarch, sort of a, 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 a responsible provider, uh, somebody who's respected in the community. Uh -huh. And if you can do all those sorts of things rather than looking to be with the most respectable person in the community or the someone who's a good provider, then you're going to be in a better place for relationships yourself. So instead of looking for the person with lots of money who can give you a nice comfy home don't be the person who earns lots of money and can then provide a lovely comfortable home for yourself or that sort of thing um Aquarius, mars and capricorn don't be gold diggers yeah, <laughs> don't right. be respectable member of society do your yeah. reputation and you'll attract the very strong respectable man <laughs> so. exactly well i mean and I guess the idea is that if you are not doing this, if you are projecting this, then you're not actually going to have your true happiness mm -hmm. uh, in relationship. And that's what we all really want because relationships can be difficult to be in just like being single can be difficult um, if we're not in a really good place personally. So by incorporating this, we have a better chance of having a happy relationship because we're being true to ourselves. Um, I'll finish these up. Aquarius, um, it's about uh, if, uh, incorporating the genius within and the eccentric and the creative, um, the advocate for equality and being all those things yourself rather than looking for someone who is eccentric, who is the genius, who is um, quite brilliant, you know, all those Aquarian type type qualities or always seeking the autonomous person or the independent person being drawn to that. You've got to really um, draw on those qualities within yourself. Um, uh, and the last one, lovely Pisces, who always waits till last. <laughs> I'm, I'm Pisces rising. I do love my Pisces. But um, 
Pisces are the, you know, we martyr ourselves for our partners and we've got to stop doing that, you know. We've got to to be much more about supporting and caring for ourselves rather than giving our care and our support and our love away to to others. So, um, you know. Take care of your soul rather than yeah. ourselves all the time, yeah. And your spiritual life because it's such a spiritual so oh, nurture, nurture the spirit. So that's yeah. I really appreciate um, Daniel's insights there. I find that it's, he gives a very well-rounded. But it makes so much sense. I'm going to start looking into it and checking with our clients now because I always focused on um, for a woman, you know, uh, for a man, what his Venus is to describe what the woman he'll be attracted to. But I never thought of recommending. To, for them to incorporate these qualities that it will make them feel more whole so they won't be approaching whoever they're attracted to out of desperation but they already have those qualities in them and they approach them as a whole being yeah beautiful yeah it is it's um the shamanic astrology is very very uh holistic that way it's really lovely i yeah. love it i should look into it yeah Thanks so much ksenia and if you would like to have a reading with Ksenia, you can find the link below. Um, her prices are very affordable. As you can see, she's very approachable down to earth and she has such a wide variety of astrology. Every time I speak with her, I learn something new. <laughs> and I think you studied Vedic and Shamanic and Western and you constantly keep uh, having new clients and expanding your knowledge and new classes. So she's an amazing reader. Uh, you can check out her services. <laughs> Thank you, Lada. You're so kind. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're uh, one of my favorite astrologers. For oh, our, all those bless you. All the insights you bring always in such a humble way as well. Oh, <laughs> must be the Pisces ascendant. <laughs> that's what it is. Jupiter. Isn't it? Your Libra yeah. moon is also super, both super sweet signs. <laughs> yeah. Lib my Libra moon is with Uranus on speaker. So I think speaker wow. might have a bit to do with <laughs> with that as well. And Jupiter's on my ascendant. So. Angel like, basically. <laughs> I love speaker. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, no, it's just I always have so much fun when I talk to you and I really enjoy being part of the channel. It's just pretty much the highlight of my life, so I love it. It's great. Yeah, and that's what you have to do if uh, being single, you say you're enjoying, you start to you have to start enjoying it because your Mars is in Leo. So you have to have lots of fun. Have lots of fun and <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, um during the, like you spoke about your teacher and her discovery of astrology when she was single this has been my story as well and there's been so much liberation and freedom that's come into my life because of because of astrology so yeah it's been wonderful and you've been a big part of that ladder i'm so yeah. grateful to you <laughs> and we've had similar teachers together haven't we Ernst. yeah Ernst's magnificent actually he's um oh yeah Check out his site if you haven't already. <laughs> He's yeah. wonderful. And uh, you study shamanic astrology. I have to look into that more, the more psychological, more spiritual side of it. Yeah, I'll send you the book. I'll send you the, the guidebook. Perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> Best, have a lovely birthday present, Lada. Ah, <laughs> giving me presents. You know, <laughs> it's like every time there's some holiday in Ksenia, it's like, what is your address again? I have a present for the baby. <laughs> I'm not telling you anymore. Okay. Stop, stop doing nice things for others. <laughs> Be selfish like a Leo and have fun. You know? Give the generous, generous well, like to myself. Generous. <laughs> yeah. Stop being more generous to me. <laughs> yes, to yourself. Thank you so much. Have a great week ahead. Thank you. You yeah. too. Enjoy your birthday. You soon. Yeah, and guys, you can. Yeah, Ksenia often posts on Astrolada on the website, not website, on the channel uh, with insightful videos. Last video is the horoscope of Jim Carrey. She's thinking of doing more videos with analysis of horoscopes of celebrities. And you can learn amazing techniques just by listening to the videos. Amazing astrology techniques. Instead of having to read 105 books, she gives <laughs> exercise 
information how to get straight to it after <laughs> after finding the best working method so perfect thank you have a thank great you. day bye bye bye